Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit today about Rack. Um, basically, Rack, uh, using Rack middleware, or Rack as middleware and authentication. Um, writing a piece of HTTP authentication middleware with Rack and JWT. JWT are JSON web tokens. Um, so I'm going to focus m the first part of the presentation on Rack and writing a piece of middleware. And if there's some time, we'll get into JWT, uh, doing some maybe writing a piece of middleware that does some authentication with that. Um, I uh, that part might be a little bit um, rough. <laughs> uh, so uh, so what the hell is Rack anyway? Um, uh, I've asked this question, I don't know, about 30,000 times in my life, and, uh, you know, some of this stuff might be review for many of us in the quote-unquote room here, but, um, I, I am a boot camp graduate, and I remember when I was going through my class, uh, we were learning Rails, and we heard that like, well, Rails is something that's built on top of Rack or something like that. And, and the whole thing was like totally confusing to me. I was, I was like, well, what is, what is this thing like that seems to have so much power over things? Um, uh, so it's, it's not that complicated really. It's just, it's a Ruby package that defines an interface to the uh, net HTTP Ruby library. Um, so it itself is basically just a library. Um, and it defines a standard for interacting with HTTP requests and responses. Uh, so a couple of key concepts that we're going to flesh out today when dealing with Rack is uh, the environment hash, uh, uh, Rack requests objects, Rack response objects, the use run pattern, and a config ru file and Rack up command. Um, uh, okay, let's build some middleware. It's going to be uh, all right. Um, okay, so the uh, it's pretty simple. Um, the simplest thing to do to start and create a Rack application is you create a config.ru file. Uh, you guys might have seen some of this before. I'll make this a bit bigger. Uh, and really, the only thing that is required is a class that gets run that has a call method on it. Uh, so we're going to create a simple hello world app and it's going to have one method. It's a class method and that's going to uh, call, that's called call. And um, then the basic thing that uh, Rack requires is that the response is a, uh, I don't know what you call it, a triple. Uh, it returns an array, and the first item of the array is a status, the second are our headers, and the third is an array of uh, body. Uh, and then we just run it. And we run it simply with the rack up command. Now you're going to have to have rack installed, obviously, and, but then it works. I've got something listening on localhost 9292. Pretty sweet. Uh, so I'm going to well, go over here to localhost 9292. Maybe. Whatever that 
refreshes, okay. Um, so just to reiterate, uh, there we are. Uh, if anybody is having any trouble like uh, following me, understanding, or like their screen, it, the visuals aren't caught up, like uh, feel free to interrupt. Um, I'm not, I can't see you right now, so you're just going to have to scream. Uh, so, sweet. So that was, that's, a, that's an app. That is a Rack app. Um, and if we wanted to actually expand upon this, we can um, create a piece of middleware that will, uh, that will connect on top of that, or in between that. Uh, so I'm going to create my middleware piece here, uh, and I'm just going to call it middleware. And anything that's being used in the middle of uh, rack apps uh, must be initialized. And then it also must respond to a call method. Uh, and you pass into the call method the environment. So if we see this app dot call env, that's going to relate to this one here. Um, server to actually bring in my middleware I need to require it and then I simply need to use it above where I'm running and I need to spell things correctly middleware okay so that's running we can see we still we're still getting hello world so nothing has changed uh, um, so let's let's do something actually somewhat interesting with this middleware so the first thing I'm going to do is instead of just printing out hello world uh, I'm going to show you guys what the environment hash looks like. We're going to inspect it. We're going to spit that out. And wow, we get all this crap. <laughs> so the environment hash has a lot of information about the request. Um, and some of the stuff is very interesting and useful. Request method. Um, Uh, let's see, you got the request URI. Um, so I'm going to mess around a little bit with that environment hash. Um, I'm going to set some uh, object on it. I'm going to say like foobar equals hello foobar. And oops. now we're going to print that out. And there we are. We've gotten hello foobar. So we've what we've done, uh, just to reiterate, we've, we're starting in middleware. Middleware is going to run. It's going to alter the environment hash, uh, and then it's going to pass it along 
to the app that gets run. And we can just stack these up. Uh, like This is our first middleware, and we've, we're setting something on environment, and then we're using that environment. Um, but I can create another one. I can create, like, uh, name, uh, uh, just call it name. Um, and we're going to follow the same pattern here. One thing I'm going to introduce now is the uh, uh, rack has a module of, uh, of a request, uh, and we can new up a request. So um, let's say rack request dot new, pass in the environment, um, and then I'm going to check if the params include uh, name and. I'm going to do some logic here. So if it does, then I'm going to call pass it, uh, pass it along. Uh, but if it doesn't, I'm going to pass, I'm going to return a different body. So then we go back to our config RU and we're going to use name. And here we're going to say hello plus name. Okay. So miracle if I didn't have any syntax errors. Okay. So, all right. So we're just gonna refresh this and nope. Okay, so sweet. So it's like, tell me your name, stupid guy. So, but wait, but if we do pass in a name, I pass in like Elizabeth. Ah, <laughs> I get an error. Um, Program, yeah.
Uh, yeah. So, sorry guys. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm trying to reference the environment hash, but I'm not actually altering it. All right, there it is. Hello, Elizabeth. Um, oh, oh, wow. Hello, Paul. And if we try to throw on something else, who bar equals Paul? Right, tell me your name. Uh, so that's middleware catching stuff. Um, how much time? I don't think I'm going to jump into the auth stuff, uh, but I do want to just finish it off with one more thing. Okay. Um, so, uh, so we have this name middleware that we're using that's checking to see if like the parameter of the name is included. Um, and one thing we can do is All right, so I just newed up a Rails project, um, and that is taking a little bit of time to run. And uh, so there on localhost 3000, we have this like, welcome to Rails. Um, so as we were kind of talking about before, um, Rails is a rack app, and as a rack app, it has a config ru file. Oops. And so we're requiring the entire application here and running that, but we can also require our name middleware and then use that. And then reboot up our application. go. Our middleware is caught uh, caught stuff before we even get to Rails. So that's pretty cool. You know, if I like then throw in name equals Jeff and we get the Rails. It passes us through. Um, so I mean that's something that you can create your own middlewares if you wanted. Um, not too hard and throw them into your Rails project or throw them into a Rack app or a Sinatra app. Uh, fairly easily, um, and it doesn't take too much imagination to consider like how you could do some really simple authentication or throw in some authentication into these into a middleware piece, uh, and make sure that you know some that some kind of token authentication token or something was in a request uh, before sending it off through your application. Um, I'm going to leave it there for now. Um, 
I uh, uh, thank you guys for taking the time to listen to me and 